familiar. This is the Creatives Get Real podcast, and I am Robin Marie Smith. And I'm Sandy Keen, and these are real conversations about creative life. Hey, Robin Marie. How's it going, Sandy? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good today. I got my hair done today. I got the it, roots colored. It looks very pretty. Yeah. yeah. It's not shiny anymore in the roots. Oh. <laughs> it was glittery in the in the in the mirrors. I'm like, I got to get this stuff taken care of. A little silvery here and there. <laughs> oh, not just here and there. A lot there. <laughs> so so anyway, um, tell us why you're getting your hair done because I think there might be a good reason. I am going to your house <laughs> in the mountains. <laughs> you are. I'm going. I'm I know. It's so funny because thinking about wait a minute it's going to be backward because we'll probably film a pot or do a podcast while I'm there and it's like wait a minute you're supposed to be here and I'm here I know so you're going to be there with my son and my dogs and my husband of course so my husband's going with me but yes yes, I'm going to get to love on your dogs and hang out in your hot tub and see the leaves change I'm so excited and I'm more excited about the fact that it's going to be cooler yes and I'm (laughs) excited for you So I hope you have a great time. And yes, please send me photos and possibly videos. I will. I promise. Thank you. Thank you. So today, folks, we are going to talk about mind mapping. You're probably going, what? What's a mind map? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, mind maps are a creative and visual way to plan things, to really get things out of your head and onto paper. You can also do them on computer, which I have done before. Mm -hmm, Um, But they're an excellent way for you to just get your thoughts out into a visual form. And you have used them longer than me. I was actually encouraged by you to kind of start using them in a way to help me plan courses and kind of get things relational in a structure that was, and it actually really helps you, I think, even be more creative. So since you started doing them before me, maybe tell our audience how you started using them and maybe, you know, in your mind, what they are exactly. Mm -hmm. It's visual and we're doing, you know, an audio thing here. Right. This is another one of those situations where (laughs) we're going to have to paint pictures with words. Yes. Um, Yes. So I, I read about mind maps long ago and because they were so visual and they can be colorful and you can get really creative with them. And my second love, you know, number one is color. Number two, Mm -hmm. organization, bingo, my love it. So what it is, um, think of them, I'm going to call them clouds. Mm. Have These circular cloud like Mm -hmm. shapes and there's one in the center. And then you have, which is your main topic. Let's say Mm. um, you're designing a new room. Let's say you it's want like to- a hub. It's like your yes. home base kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It, exactly. It is like a hub. And then off that comes these shoots, these mm-hmm. branches, folks, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And uh, on those comes a cloud. And it can just keep repeating as many times as you like as you break down a topic from its largest element down to the small details. So it's a really great way to organize information and pull out those small pieces that you need to include in it, like decorating a room. You know, you might start with the main cloud is, you know, your bedroom Mm -hmm. and then your color scheme. And what are you putting in there? Furniture, soft goods, and just keep breaking Mm -hmm. it down, breaking it down. So, yes, I love mind mapping. Tell me a little bit about your experience. What have you used? It yeah, for? well, mainly um, two. There's been two uh, reasons why I sort of gravitated to it, and I love the visual aspect of it because it. I, as a creative, and most of us probably can say that we were visual, and it's easier to grasp a concept when it when it's in a picture form or mm-hmm. when you watch a video or whatever. And so the first time I used them uh, after you had kind of suggested it was to plan a, a workshop, one of my online workshops. And it really helped because I used the main cloud or the hub was the workshop itself. And then each of the spokes that came off of that are lines. If you're drawing mm-hmm. were like the modules for the courses. And then right. I could break that out into the lessons and then, add in where I wanted downloads or 
videos and audios or whatever it would look like. And it really helped me to get an idea of that, you know, the full course and see where am I missing something? Mm -hmm. Or I could then add another spoke or another line in to add another part to it. The other way that I've used it is to actually plan and create a structure to my in-person teaching. And I kind of call them flow charts, but they're very much mind maps, but they Mm -hmm. very much work like that is to chart out what the class structure will look like. And so it's sort of, I think, a cross between a mind map, maybe in a flow chart, but the students would kind of laugh at me a bit because I'd have these papers with the, the little bubbles and the circles and the lines, but it helped me stay organized and I didn't miss anything. I didn't miss steps. I didn't miss points. I didn't miss uh, any of the you know different things. I would even plug in, okay, this is when lunch is happening and then we're doing whatever. So right. it really helped me get a visual structure even of how I would do something, which is really project-based. I mean, that's really what it is, right? I mean, you're planning a redo of a home or you're planning a party or whatever, you can, you can do a mind map for it. But it, but what I like about it is the fact that you're, you're linking things together too. So it's in a way, I mean, it's logical, Mm -hmm. you know, with the way that you build it. So um, those are the two ways primarily that I've used um, the mind mapping. Plus it's pretty, you know, you can get out your markers and your, your crayons or whatever, and you can mm-hmm. go big. And I have some big paper I like to just plop down in. And I've done them in journals or notebooks, but um, I really like the idea of doing them bigger. And then I you do have too. plenty of room. Mm-hmm. Um, now, do you ever um, do them on your whiteboard where it's Absolutely. more of a temporary thing? Yeah. In, in fact, of there's, there's a mind map on my whiteboard right now. <laughs> It's oh, actually, I can't see it. Oh my gosh. It, it's yeah. not in this room, but um, yeah. it's actually a board game that we're playing that I'm nice. mind mapping um, information. But yeah, I do. I, I mind map like you on either a large piece of newsprint because it's almost the size of my desk Yes. or on a giant because yeah. I think that small whiteboards are useless. It has to be big. <laughs> oh, mine's small. <laughs> Uh oh. No, Sandy's yours takes up like it's bigger than a huge television. It's like a big, it's like a big pull down monitor screen. But it's great though, because I know we yeah. were there before and we're like, uh, we need to whiteboard this. Okay. And we're getting out the, you know, but that's a great way to build out your thoughts and link things together. And then when you see them visually, you're like, okay, that needs to go here or that needs to connect to this. And right. it really does help. Uh, I, I don't know. It's not as linear. Is that the right way to say yes. it? As mm-hmm. looking at, yeah. Like an outline. You know how yeah. we were yes. taught. In fact, um, I'm so old that <laughs> when we were taught <laughs> outlines, I had this old school army um, teacher who used to take a ruler with a red pen and, and go down your paper. And if everything wasn't touching those red lines, oh, boy. you would it over. Like, oh, my. Wow. Um, anal much yeah that's that's intense there <laughs> that is intense yeah I'd like to show her a mind map now <laughs> like look at this it's free flowing and my lines are crooked <laughs> um yeah but you know what I what else I love about that is seeing the whole thing as a big picture mm-hmm. is it reminds you of the small details that you could forget things like if you are teaching in class like I'm going to do this over here oh wait I don't have enough of this. I'd better order this. Right. And it helps you pick up those little details that you could miss or forget if everything was real linear and you weren't seeing it all as one big picture. Well, and I think the mind map also helps you, just like you said, when you're looking at it, to me, I can put myself more into the position of what that action is going to be versus a linear list. I like Mm -hmm. lists, but when I can look at that module and I can see the module for that class and I can see the lessons and everything, it's almost like I can visualize it in the computer, see everything, or I can see myself teaching it and going, okay, yeah, like you said, I got everything. This is it missing or whatever. And what's nice is if you're somebody who likes to doodle, this is like, this is great doodly therapy because it's, you can draw pictures and icons and You can add in if you wanted to, and I've done this before, um, like small little, maybe things I've printed or pictures and where it becomes even more. I'd almost, 
sort of emulates the the board game mentality, I think, too, you know, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. Um, I think of the game of life, you know, where it has, that's dating me, but where you have all of those things and you're like, okay, I can see I'm right here. I'm going to go there and you have it all put together, but um, you can expand them and do them however you want. You know, you can get as detailed as you want to with them. Right. I mean, you can, you can tape things on, you can add lists Mm -hmm. diagrams, you can storyboard something, you Mm -hmm. know, if you need little illustrations of things like, you know, this is what my, um, my title bar is going to look like, or this is what my PDF Mm -hmm. is going to look like or whatever you want to do. I mean, you can keep going and make it as detailed as you want. Mm -hmm. Or if you're just looking to have some fun, you can make it as, you know, as creative you want your, your, hub can be a big giant flower or sure, whatever you, right. want to, you know yeah. and doodle all over it mm-hmm. in yeah. fact that sounded really fun <laughs> I know <laughs> and you know and maybe if that's not your thing and you have maybe a cork board or somewhere where you can thumbtack you know you can take string start a hub whatever that main point or key idea is and then string them out Mm -hmm. And then have, you know, pictures or post-its or notes or things. It's almost like a crime board. I was just going to say that. Because I'm seeing the scene from all these movies. Yes, exactly. And I like crime type novels and stuff. So it's like, oh, they always get the board out. And it's like you're putting things up and you're, but you're connecting. You're connecting things. Connecting the dots. that's, That's exactly right. And when you can see it visually, it just really helps you in so many ways that you wouldn't otherwise maybe have if you were just doing it as an outliner on paper. So plus it's pretty and it's fun. And that's what we like as creatives. We like to have that. Yeah. And then what I've done sometimes is after, and if I've done them in like a large journal or book, I'll end up using the base of that when I'm done, not all the time as a journal page, like I'll Mm -hmm. on it and add collage to it. It becomes sort of the base of the page for journaling. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, could see you know, doing that. Why not? Make copies of it if you want to keep it, store them in notebooks, and you can reference them later. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to, to, yeah. If you use a whiteboard, take photographs, and then you mm-hmm. can store those for later if you, um, just a reference. But I think for me, the more that I do them, sometimes I'm like, why am I not mind mapping this? This would make this so much easier. Um, I get, uh, it makes more sense. I get better at it. Um, I think the key when you're starting out is to give yourself enough room because I know when I first started, it was like, oh no, my hub, it, the, the spokes aren't very long and I need lots of space. And then mm-hmm. I ended up, you know, would branch more things out and it would be, oh, I don't have enough room for that. So, yeah. So this is not something you do on eight and a half by 11. No. Paper. <laughs> not at all. Go big no. people. If, if yeah. all you have is eight and a half by 11, you're going to need to tape. Tape them. Like, yeah. Send together. That's true. That's true. Yes. We're talking large. This is not, yeah, no, not that. We're desk blotter size. Mm -hmm. Big, go big and give yourself lots of room. If it's something that has a lot of moving parts to it, that's when Mm -hmm. you really want to make sure it's bigger. But how cool would that be though, to take that, you know, crunchy newspaper, newsprint paper, maybe even paper. I mean, I jot down on that as my under paper on my work table. So it's got a little bit of paint on it or whatever. And then you do this mind map on it and then you kind of fold it all up. It's like, it's, it's its own art piece, you know, it's, it is an art project when you're finished with it. it. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. But I think we might turn most everything we do into an art project. (laughs) We do, don't we? (laughs) Hmm, what can I do with this? What else can I do with this? Yeah, we do yeah. ask ourselves that, don't we? Can I fold it? Can I cut it? Can I paint on it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yes. true. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I hope people will give them a try if that's something that they think that could be helpful in their um, problem solving or mm-hmm. organizing. Because I use them as problem solvers too. Like yes. I've got a big thing I need to work out. Mm-hmm. That I, I like to mind map things for um, problem solving. Yeah. And I haven't, I don't think I've used them for that as much as it's been for like specific projects and planning. Mm-hmm. But then there's times, like I said, where I'm going, okay, there's got to be a better way to do this. Like I can't think in the linear format for this. And maybe that is the answer, you know, to pull it out and go, okay, 
it's almost like scenarios where you're kind of going, okay, this is scenario, this is scenario or whatever. Here's the problem in the middle, the hub. Mm -hmm. And then from that or the scenarios, or if I make this decision or that decision, what does that look like? What are the repercussions? Is there right. it meets? And then it's a little easier to actually solve it and get a better feel and grasp of what it, what it is. Yeah. Cause you can yeah. see the whole big picture yeah. all at yeah. once. Well, and it's easier to, to link those things. And when you do that and you see them now, I, I pulled a stat and I don't know really um, exactly where it came from. Um, it was in some notes about our learning and improved mem when we're during the memory process mm -hmm. versus just conventional note taking. Cause we know that when we, we actually try to learn something. If we hear it or we write it down, the more that we process it in different ways, the more mm -hmm. we are likely to retain it. So I think that that would be another benefit to mind Absolutely. mapping it out. I agree. Absolutely. I mean, I would say that a majority of artists are visual. I do know some artists that are auditory, which always confuses me um, because I think auditorially, is my least effective way to learn. Like, mm -hmm. please don't tell me something and make me remember it. Mm -hmm. I have to write it down. You write it down. Yep. I have That's to correct. see it. Um, but there are people that learn auditorily. So I, I agree. The more, you know, the more ways you can learn something mm -hmm. it's presented, the better off you are, the faster right. you'll learn it. And yeah, finding what, what is your way. You know, if right. I go, if I'm looking online for help on something. I need to learn how to do something. If I land on a blog post or an article and it's all written with photos or just text, I'm going right back to Google because I give me give a, a video, video. Any day and I can do it so much faster. It's just the way my brain processes it. Yeah. Right. So, and you can also mind map. Um, we mentioned, we touched on it earlier, not just with paper. You can, you know, use corkboard, whiteboard, but you can also do it we touched on a little bit digitally. Um, mm -hmm. There are apps, lots of apps out there that you can use on your iPad. Um, the one that I use um, that I did on the computer was for my courses, for my workshops when I taught in person, because then I could just change out the data easily and reprint them and then bring them to class with me. And right. there are free options out there, paid options, but it's, uh, it's definitely something that we would encourage you to look into because it's, it's fun too. It is. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I used, do you remember Poplet? That's the one oh I gosh, used. I I, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. um, it was P O P P L E T dot com, Poplet. Mm -hmm. And that was the first place that I went for mind mapping. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot Poplet, there. Yeah. The one that I, and I think I have, I think I got in on like a, a beta ground floor offering for MindMeister. And that mind meister and, and I liked it. That's the one I was, you know, that I used for my stuff, but there's so okay. many good ones out there, but I do remember Poplet. I do remember mm -hmm. that one. So, but we'll, yeah. we'll put links in the, in the show notes for those. So yeah. Okay. I, I like, uh, I like this mind mapping thing and I hope that our listeners do as well, or at least give it a try. Yeah. I think it's a creative way to problem solve and to organize and yeah. create something. So yeah, it'd be interesting to hear if other people are mind mapping, if they've ever heard of it and if they use it. So we would love to get some feedback and hear what you guys have to say about it. Yep, absolutely. And you can Google mind maps and look at images all day long on Google. Yes, ma'am. Some of them are pretty amazing. I mean, some of them are so finely detailed that you just want to go, there's no way I can do that. But, you know, I can do my own version of that. But yeah, okay. right. But have fun uh, with it, guys. There's no rules. There's no, it has to be done a certain way or in a certain color or format. This is all about your free expression and making it work for you in whatever. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Okay. So I'd like to just say, enjoy the mountains. Tell them I said hello. <sighs> I will. And I'll roll the window down right at the point where I get to the barn and it's time to make the turn so the fresh air comes into the car. Yes, that, that is a ritual that must be observed. Well, I noticed that. It's like, okay, I'm going to have to make sure I remember that. So, yeah, I'll be an indoctrinating Bobby into the whole thing. So Right. Roll down but, the windows, yes. smell the fresh air, the mountains, the trees. I know. It's going to be awesome. <gasps> And I'll be here smelling the air conditioning. Oh, next time. Soon enough. <laughs> All right, guys. We appreciate you listening. And we will 
be with you on the next week's podcast. All right, guys. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.